WAN termination points. In this lesson of the CompTIA Network Plus course, we'll be discussing WAN termination points. So let's get right down to it. What is a WAN termination point? It's obviously got something to do with networks, which you might have guessed already. A WAN termination point is basically the point where your provider's network stops and your network starts. In most countries, if you have something like, for example, fiber, the provider would normally bring the fiber line up to more or less the outside of your house or more or less the outside of your office. The point at your house or your office where they bring it up to is normally considered the termination point. That is the WAN termination point. In most cases, you'll find at the termination point, there's a little box of some kind, which is generally waterproof. This box is usually referred to as a termination box, which makes sense since it's a termination point and it's a box. So why not call it a termination box? Now, if you or your client or whatever eventually one day decides to go and get a fiber line installed in a house or an office building, someone would normally come out to the premises and then from that termination box install a fiber cable into the home or the office. This person that comes out in most cases will normally work for the provider, which will most likely be the entity who owns the fiber infrastructure in that area. This obviously depends on your country, bro, but in most countries, the fiber infrastructure is normally owned by one entity. And then once you've got your fiber line, it's up to you or your client to still go and get some sort of subscription with an ISP of their choice. So your internet service provider being your ISP and a person giving you the actual fiber line, that is not always going to be the same entity. This could very well be two different companies and in most cases will be. So the people that's generally going to come out to the premises to go and install that fiber line from that little fiber box all the way into the building, that is in most cases going to be the people who owns the infrastructure, who owns those fiber lines. All right. A WAN termination point is also commonly known as a demarcation point or demark for short. In case anyone is wondering what this WAN termination point might look like, here is a photo for you, which I took of my own WAN termination box outside my house. If you look at the photo, there are two PVC pipes coming out below the box. Now on my box, the pipe on the right has a fiber line in it. Now you can't see it because it's inside of that pipe. The pipe on the left will usually be empty in most cases, at least in the beginning, until you, your client, whoever decides to actually get fiber installed, and then when that time comes, the fiber company will normally come out, open the box, splice some fiber cable, cable in there, and then obviously going to go and blow the compressed air down that pipe all the way to wherever it needs to go. So in my case, the provider came out to my house, they opened that little termination box, which is also known as a termination point or demarcation point, as some call it. And then from that box, they splice the fiber cable, which, well, obviously comes into my house. Now on the inside of the building, which in my case is my house, the fiber cable normally connects to a little box. And this box is called an ONT. This is short for optical network terminal. The device is also known as a CPE, which is short for client premises equipment. The provider normally provides you with this ONT device during the installation of the fiber line into your house or into your office. It's a good idea to go check beforehand where you want this device to be because it can be very expensive to move that device later. Normally, once they fix it, they're going to fix that little device to the wall in most cases. And once they fix it there, it's fixed. So if you want that thing moved, you're going to have to call the provider again. They're going to come out. They're going to move it for you. It's not as simple as just unplugging it and moving it to a different place in the building. It's not that simple. It's not like a router. So you're going to have to call the provider out to come and do it for you. And this can be quite expensive for them to go and move it again. It's pretty much the same as the installation cost in the beginning. So once they install it in a specific place in the building, that's normally where it's going to stay. You should also make sure that wherever you choose to have this little ONT device, that you've got power near that device. Because obviously this device is going to require some sort of power source. Once you have the ONT all set up, you should see about three cables plugged into it. That's normally more or less how many cables the average Joe would see. 
one of those cables is obviously going to be, well, your power cable like we just discussed. One cable will be the fiber line coming in from the outside, obviously from that little termination box we just showed you. So it's going to come in from that termination box, it's going to come into your house or your office building, and it's going to connect to that little ONT device. The third cable will normally go from that ONT device into your router. So that third cable can be anything, you know. So it's in most cases, from what I've seen, it's going to be a normal network cable, which is usually those ones that comes with the RJ45 connectors. But in other cases, it can also be a fiber cable, believe it or not. So besides the fiber cable coming in from the outside that's going to connect to that ONT, you might have a very short little fiber cable, a second one in other words, that's going to connect to your ONT, and that little bug bugger is going to go into your router. But like I said, in most cases, it's going to be a network cable. So in most cases, you're going to plug a network cable into the network port, the RJ45 jack on the ONT. From there, it's going to go into the WAN port of your router. And there you go. All set up. Now, in case you're curious on how this device looks, I obviously have a photo here for you guys. But let's make it a bit bigger. This is the ONT in my house. I censored some stuff on it with personal details, so that's the black bar you guys see on that device. That black bar is not there normally, I, I basically put that there with Photoshop, because I censored some stuff out, so just ignore that. Alright, so it won't necessarily look exactly like mine, but that's a pretty good idea. That's going to give you a pretty good idea of what more or less you can expect. So you'll see in the photo, there is three cables plugged into mine. The black cable, way on the left, behind the network cable, is the fiber line coming in from the outside from my termination box. And if you go check right before that little fiber cable, that little black cable, you'll find a normal network cable. That little network cable plugs into my ONT and it goes into the WAN port of my router. In most cases, it's going to be a network cable. If you look way on the right, that third cable, well, I guess you guys can pretty much guess what that cable is going to be. It's the power cable, obviously. All right, folks, that's the main stuff you need to know when it comes to this topic of WAN termination point. I probably went way too far in this video, but most of the stuff, well, actually pretty much everything I mentioned in this video, is still Network Plus nonetheless. And it is still stuff you need to know for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. So I wouldn't say it's useless information. Either way, it's stuff you would have had to go and learn anyway if your intention is to go and study for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. So, well, there you go. You're welcome. Okay, so to summarize, the WAN termination point, in a nutshell, is simply just the point where your provider's network stops and yours starts. It's usually going to be some form of box like the one I showed you in this photo, and this is usually also known as, well, a termination box. So you can think of this termination point or, well, box as the boundary between the provider's network and your network or, well, your client's network, if it happens to be your client. Everything on the one side is going to be the provider's network and, well, basically their responsibility or their problem. Everything on the other side is going to be the client's responsibility or problem, which might be you if it's your house, for example. Well, folks, that's all there is to it. Yes, really, I'm serious. That's pretty much all there is to it. So some of these topics might sound complicated and they might sound difficult, but in reality, you'll very quickly pick up that a lot of these topics aren't always what they seem. This one, for instance, is a lot easier and a lot simpler than it actually sounds, as you hopefully have picked up in this video. Okay, folks, so if you've enjoyed this lesson and if you've learned something, please give this video a like to let me know that you've enjoyed it. And if you'd like to stay informed of any new lessons I upload, remember to also hit that subscribe button. Lastly, like usual, I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to the Patreon sponsors of this channel. If any of you would also like to sponsor this channel so I can make more content like this, you can find all of that info in the video description down below. Alright, so a special thank you to the Patreons of this channel and I will see everybody on the next lesson. Bye guys.